What's up guys, so today I want to go over how I make my website's GDPR complaint, uh, the methods I've used and what has worked for me. So first things first, I just want to disclaim it's not legal advice. If you're unsure about anything, please contact a professional lawyer who can help you out with these things. Um, so what is GDPR? It's designed to give EU citizens more control over their personal data. Um, it affects the way companies can collect and use data and it's applicable to all websites in the EU or any website that has EU visitors. So what are the reasons you need to be compliant? So you can be fined up to £20 million, uh, I'm not sure what that is in euros, or you can be fined 4% of your annual income. So how do you make your website GDPR compliant? You've got a few options. You can learn GDPR yourself, um, which is very time consuming. Yes, it will be cheap, but you have to be sure that you know what you're doing and you've got a legal background. Um, you can outsource it to a professional team uh, or a lawyer. This is the best peace of mind, however, probably the most expensive solution. Or there's a third option, you can use a third party software like this one I've got on the screen here, Termly. This is what I use. Um, it's the cheapest and most cost effective way. They're constantly updating the service and they generate policies for you and they're constantly keeping up to date with all the changes in GDPR. So if we have a look at the plans here, um, you can see the pro starts at as little as $15 per month, which is about 11 or 12 pounds per month. Um, you can do it monthly as well, but it costs a little bit more. So these are annual plans. Um, you can use the free version if you've only got one website and you only have 100 website visitors per month. However, it only updates the, the cookies. It only scans your cookies once per year. So I would recommend if you have the budget, then definitely go with the paid version. Um, but at a bare minimum, if you just want the basic compliance, you can go with the free one and get by on that. However, I would recommend the pro version for that ultimate peace of mind. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the steps of setting up Termly on your website and how to generate the policies and the cookie consent banners. So I'm going to do it with my own personal website. So you just fill in the name of your project and enter your URL of your website. Make sure you're on HTTPS. Um, oh, we don't need the HTTPS there. Just a www. Now it'll ask you for your business information and any information relating to the website, just address, phone numbers, emails and legal names. So you want to fill all this in. The website information, again we've already put that inside there. So I'm going to fill all this in. So once you've filled all that information in, it will take you to this page where it is the consent management. So this is setting up the, the cookie notification banner that pops up on websites when you visit it. So what you want to do is you want to scan your website. And what this will do is, this will pick up the majority, 99% of cookies on your website. If you've got some specific cookies that you've installed yourself, um, maybe they're not very common or they're not very well used, it might not be able to pick them up. So you want to make sure that all the cookies on your, on your website um, are picked up and are added to your cookie policy. So this has picked up all the cookies on my website. You can see it's got an essential cookie there. Um, essential cookies are fine, There's web browsers need them to work and you can let them run on pages if people opt out of them, you can still have essential cookies running. Um, there's no performance or functionality ones. There's analytics like Google AdWords and analytics. There's advertising again um, and that's it, that's all the cookies it's picked up. So the next step is we want to generate the cookie policy and this will generate the cookie policy on the cookies it scanned. So this just has information about what cookies we use, why we use them, um, how people can control and change their preferences to what cookies run on their web browser. Um, and it lists the, the cookies there and their uses. Once you've generated your cookie policy to add it to your website, you're going to want to click up here. Now, if you're on a free version, you have to use the HTML format, so you'll need to create a new page on your website and copy and paste the HTML onto that page. Now, this doesn't automatically update if there's any changes to your policy, so I would recommend going with one of these two options. I'm gonna go with the URL version, 
the code snippet version, you need to make another page on your website again, but it automatically updates if you use this version. So I'm going to use a URL, I'm going to copy and paste this here. I'm going to put it into my website, so I've got my cookie policy link at the bottom here. Cookie policy, and I'm going to go to website, you cookie policy, website URL, copy and paste it there. And if you go to my website now, cookie policy, if I click on it, it brings me to the cookie policy hosted by Termly, and this will automatically update, so it's always with the most recent updates and additions to your policy. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create a privacy policy. So you wanna click here, create a privacy policy, and you wanna go through the steps and add any information that is applicable to your site or application. But what the privacy policy basically does is it lets your users know what information you collect, why you collect it, how you store it, and how they can contact you to request their information to be deleted or to request access to their personal data you have stored about them. So I've gotten to a point in the privacy policy generator where it might be confusing for some people. So another thing to note is on your privacy policy, if you use any third party software, such as uh, marketing or tracking analytics, um, advertising, uh, what else, like payment software, if you take payments on your website, if you have any website chats, you, you need to link to these applications privacy policies or at least the snippets in their privacy policies um, that cover you. So the good thing about Termly is with their generator, it guides you on that and it, it'll automatically add their policies to yours. So for example, if I use uh, Google AdWords, I will search here, so advertising direct marketing, I'm gonna search Google AdSense and you see that comes up and it will put it into your policy for you. Now, if you're using something very niche or very specific, it might not show up on Termly. So you would need to get in touch with that company and figure out what their privacy policy is and what you need to include on your website. So once you've generated your privacy policy, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing and add it to your website in the same way you did with your cookie policy. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create your cookie banner, the notification that pops up whenever anyone new visits your website. And the great thing about Termly, what this will do is once you add it to your website, it'll stop cookies from loading until people have had the chance to opt in, which is what the EU GDPR requires. So you can change all the settings here, um, you can put your custom colors in, you can have it in the middle, the bottom right, at the top, you can change whatever settings you want on how it looks. Um, there's some options there that you need to check if they apply to you or not. And then here's your consent options. So I've got it set up, you can have it on global, you can specify it to US, California, or EU. You can have settings for each. I just keep global on because it's the simplest, it's better to be safe than sorry, I think. So what you'll need is you'll need to enable the consent banner, yes. Um, the decline button, you don't need. Um, the preferences button, you need. Opt-in need, you can't automatically opt people in. They need to opt in themselves. And you can't have implied consent, meaning when someone scrolls or clicks on somewhere else on the website that it automatically consents. They have to consent themselves before they can go further. When you go to embed it in your website, you'll get these options here. It'll say enable auto blocker. You wanna keep this checked because it'll, like I said before, it'll block the cookies from running until the person's accepted, which is required. Um, so what you do is you copy and paste this code. Go to your website. Now, somewhere on your website platform, if you're using, I'm using Duda, if you're using Webflow, if you're using uh, Wix or Squarespace, um, there'll be a setting on there to, so in Duda, it's the head HTML, it's called. So you want to add the code to the head HTML and copy and paste this in there. So as you can see, that's it in there. Now, if you've got any other scripts in there or any other codes in there, you want to put this right at the top because if it's not right at the top, your other cookies will load before this, which is against the GDPR. So you want to make sure it's at the top of your, cook of your head HTML so that it loads first. Once you've added that code to your website and to your head HTML, you can verify your install to make sure it's all working okay. So it takes a few seconds to verify, but if you go to your website in the meantime, 
you can see it pops up here now you can accept and you see the preferences so you can select what you opt into um, and you can choose which cookies load and which don't um, now if you just select all it will automatically run them all and the last thing to set up with Termly is the enable to change your preferences at any time so you've got to give visitors the option whenever they're on your site they can change the preferences at any time and you can do this with Termly by embedding a button onto your website so you go to your consent management embedded preferences center and then it will give you some code for a button and then you want to copy this HTML into your site I'm going to do that I've got a section here where I can paste HTML and you can do this on all website platforms as well I'm going to paste that in update and then that will give me a button a button on the website I will change it around and make it look better later but basically what happens is if I just publish that site again now if you click on the website and you click on the button it comes back up with the cookie preferences so even after people have opted in they can still change their preferences so once you have Termly set up and sorted you're almost fully GDPR compliant however there's a couple of things it won't do for you so the first thing is it won't put an SSL certificate on your website uh, that's this green padlock up here for you. This basically makes your website encrypted and it keeps your users information safe basically. Um, most website platforms and hosting services have this available and it's very easy to install because it's the norm these days. And the last thing is anything to do with your contact forms. So if you've got any opt-in boxes, um, so if you're going to collect people's information from contact forms you need to have a, a checkbox on there. If you've got multiple uses you're going to use that information for, so you've got one to accept terms and conditions, uh, a reason to for market materials, you need to have separate check boxes for each one. So if you want them to sign up to a newsletter and you want to um, get their consent to agree to the terms and conditions, you need to have two separate check boxes for that. And I think that about covers it. If you've got any questions about this, uh, please leave it in the comments down below and I'll be happy to answer it. And that's all for now.